Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund, and I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday, the 11th of December, 2024, and now onto our key headlines for today's episode. One, General Fusion confirms significant fusion neutron yield and plasma stability during MTF compression experiment series with new peer-reviewed publication. Two, China ships vital ITER modules for assembly of world's largest fusion reactor. Three, researchers reveal the mechanism of runaway electron generation in tokamak fusion reactors. Four, Tokamak Energy partners with US DOE and UK's DESNES to accelerate fusion development through $52 million ST40 upgrade. Five, nuclear data interagency working group funding opportunity. And make sure you stay till the end because as usual, I have quite a few interesting bonus stories that you might want to check out. One, general fusion confirms significant fusion neutron yield and plasma stability during MTF compression experiment series with new peer reviewed publication. First up, we turn our attention to FIA member General Fusion's recent achievements. General Fusion, headquartered in Vancouver, has recently set a remarkable milestone in fusion performance by achieving over 600 million neutrons per second using its magnetized target fusion or MTF approach. This achievement emerged from compressing spherical tokamak plasmas to unprecedented densities, about 190 times their initial state, and boosting the magnetic field more than 13 fold. Results, which were published in Nuclear Fusion, confirm stable, high-performing plasmas that validate the practicality of volumetric compression. Unlike approaches requiring large superconducting magnets or costly laser setups, General Fusion's short-pulse fusion method protects the fusion plant vessel and efficiently rebreathes fuel. The company's success de-risks future projects, notably its forthcoming Lawson Machine 26, or LM26 which aims to achieve higher yields and maintain a steady march towards commercial fusion energy. Achieving such conditions paves the way for LM26's development, leading to scaled-up demonstrations and grid-ready power by the early to mid-2030s. These feats underscore the growing confidence in MTF's potential. By combining engineering ingenuity, strategic collaborations and iterative experimentation, General Fusion is steadily narrowing the gap between Fusion's theoretical promise and its tangible application on a commercial scale. Two, China ships vital ITER modules for assembly of world's largest fusion reactor. Second up, we move from private industry to a grand international effort with an article from Interesting Engineering. China's recent shipment of 48 essential blanket shield block modules to the ITER site in France represents a significant step forward for the world's largest experimental fusion machine. ITER, which Chinese media often refer to as the artificial sun, is a global partnership of the European Union, the United States, Japan, Russia, India, South Korea and China itself. These meticulously engineered modules safeguard the fusion device's vacuum chamber by managing intense neutron fluxes and dispersing heat loads, ensuring crucial stability and protecting nearby equipment and personnel. Acting like resilient refractory bricks, the modules highlight the complexity and collaboration inherent to the ITER project. Alongside South Korea, which is also supplying hundreds of these modules, China's contribution demonstrates the multinational synergy driving ITER towards its goal of achieving net energy fusion. Although the current phase focuses on structural and shielding components rather than tritium production, these deliveries set the stage for future innovations. As installations continue, scientists gain invaluable data on how materials respond in extreme conditions, refining ITER's design and boosting confidence in its eventual success. Three, researchers revealed the mechanism of runaway electron generation in tokamak fusion reactors. Third up, we explore new insights into a long-standing challenge in plasma physics with an article from phys.org. Runaway electrons, accelerated to immense speeds by strong electric fields needed to ignite and sustain plasma, pose a critical challenge for tokamak fusion devices. By continuously gaining energy, these electrons can destabilize plasmas and damage device components, complicating the quest for long-duration, stable fusion conditions. Recently, researchers at Seoul National University, in collaboration with global partners, discovered a refined mechanism for how these electrons form during startup phases. Classical theories previously averaged out energy losses, failing to capture the complexity of electron interactions with neutral particles. In reality, these collisions have a binary character. 
some preserve electron energy, known as elastic collisions, and others abruptly reduce it, known as inelastic collisions. Understanding this subtlety allows engineers and physicists to better anticipate runaway conditions and devise methods to mitigate them. Armed with this improved kinetic theory, plant designers can develop operational scenarios and safeguards to reduce or prevent runaway electrons. Such precise modelling will be especially valuable for large-scale projects such as ITER, which was just mentioned, enabling more stable plasma formation and less wear on device components. Ultimately, refining our understanding of runaway electrons is a key step towards achieving reliable, controlled fusion energy gener generation. Four, Tokamak Energy partners with US, DOE and UK's DESNES to accelerate fusion development through $52 million ST40 upgrade. Next up, we examine a major public-private partnership fueling next-generation fusion plants. FIA member Tokamak Energy's ST40 spherical Tokamak is poised for a significant upgrade courtesy of a $52 million investment co-sponsored by the US Department of Energy, the UK's Department for Energy Security and Net Zero, and the company itself. Drawing on more than a decade of expertise, Tokamak Energy aims to optimise ST40 so it can replicate conditions expected in future pilot-scale fusion plants. Central to the upgrade is the application of a lithium coating to the device's inner walls a strategic modification intended to enhance plasma confinement and sustain higher temperatures and densities for longer periods. By fine-tuning materials and operational parameters, the ST40 program will generate insights that inform the design of commercial fusion systems. Moreover, ST40's improved capability will be shared with academic and national lab researchers in both the US and the UK, accelerating the global learning curve. This cooperation ensures that progress made in ST40's environment benefits the entire community, expediting the fusion sector's march towards delivering a practical, abundant and clean energy source. 5. Nuclear Data Interagency Working Group Funding Opportunity Fifth up, we highlight a funding initiative designed to strengthen fusion's foundational data. Accurate data forms the bedrock of reliable fusion plant modelling. Every aspect of plant design, predicting neutron interactions, gauging material endurance, and optimising operational scenarios, depends on trustworthy information. Recognising this, the US Department of Energy's Office of Science has announced a $2 million funding opportunity through the Nuclear Data Interagency Working Group. This initiative aims to enhance essential inputs such as neutron cross-sections, decay pathways, and activation products, ultimately improving the fidelity of fusion simulations. With letters of intent due by 2nd of January 25 and full applications by 3rd of March 25, the programme encourages interdisciplinary teams to deploy innovative experiments, theoretical models and computational tools. By refining data quality, the fusion community can minimise uncertainties and sharpen its predictive capabilities. More accurate modelling leads to a more efficient plant design, safer conditions for operations and shorter development timelines on the road to commercial fusion deployment. This funding opportunity reaffirms the department's commitment to ensuring that the intellectual infrastructure supporting fusion keeps pace with the field's rapid technological progress. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, I have news of the world's first fusion energy cafe, opening at the Bridge Skills Hub in Worksop. Officially launched by the UK Climate Minister, Carrie McCarthy, Visitors can immerse themselves in interactive displays, enjoy themed decor and attend guest talks that bring cutting edge research to life over a cup of coffee. I always really love seeing fusion initiatives that blend science with community engagement. So make sure to read more about it in the link below, um, or if you get the chance, pop in to experience it for yourself and let me know in the comments. Next, we turn our attention to more technical matters and innovations in inertial confinement fusion with an article from Physics World about laser fusion optimization algorithms. Have a look at the link below if you'd like to read about how it could enable researchers to rapidly refine laser setups. And last but not least, I'd like to point you to an opportunity to see the world's largest fusion machine without leaving your home. For those who've always wanted a closer look, ITA is offering a virtual introduction and facility tour on the 19th of December from one o'clock to 2.30 CET. Registration is via email at visit at ITER.org, which is linked below. It's a really great chance for participants to virtually enter this international collaboration to see how scientists and engineers are working to harness the power of fusion. 
and that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next year.